Okay, so now uh, you should hopefully have your UV layout figured out for your model. And we're gonna go ahead and try to bake um, this texture onto this one now. Uh, okay, so uh, the first thing to do, I think, is we'll go to this tab here, which looks like the back of a DSLR camera or something. This is our render properties. Go ahead and click on that. And uh, we actually can't bake textures using the most recent uh, render engine for Unity, or sorry, for Blender, which is Eevee. So we can click on this and switch over to Cycles, which is an older one. Um, and now the option that we'll want to open up here is called Bake. So you can click this little drop down, and you see you have a bunch of different options for baking textures. Uh, we'll talk about some of these later, but for now we are going to try to just bake, bake the texture from this model into this one. So for bake type, I'll switch it to diffuse, which is just going to give us the diffuse color. Uh, in terms of our contributions here, I just want the color. I think this will look a little bit different in Blender 3, but um, you'll see a lot of these same options here. Now uh, I'll open this tab up and I'll check selected to active. So this is what's going to allow us to bake from one object, the selected object, to another, the active object. Um, and then I think we'll just leave it at that to start with. So I'll show both of these. Um, so, uh, and I'm in my shading tab, so I can see this uh, image editor window. I can see my, uh, this, this is the shader with this um, uh, image texture node in it. Uh, if I click on this one, I can see I've got a different one. So uh, what I want to do is click on my new retopology model. This is my low poly model. Make sure that this texture that I want to bake into is selected. And then I'll uh, hold shift and click on my uh, capture, my higher poly model. And then I will click bake and hopefully this will give us a good result. And you can see I got some little um, error message, but it's going to go ahead and bake. This takes a little bit of time, uh, depending on your setup here. So I guess I'll just pause. Okay, so the bake has finished. I can see just by looking at this that there's some problems with my bake, though. So let's let's break that down a little bit. Um, I'll deselect these. For now, this looks good. I have both of my models, right, are visible here, and um, it looks like the texture is transferred from one to the other. However, when I hide my original model, I can see I've got some patches here. This is very strange. This took me a long, long, long time to figure out. <laughs> uh, but if you look very carefully, it's actually where these two models are intersecting is where I'm getting this problem. So anywhere where my, uh, my retopology dips inside of the other model, uh, that's where I get these patches. Um, the reason for this is basically it's shooting a little laser beam from the surface of my new model uh, inward, and it's hoping to hit the capture and then sample some textures there. However, in places where this lower poly model is inside of the other one, it's going to shoot that laser beam all the way through the mesh to the other side and probably sample, you know, if it's the shield, it's getting the back of his coat. If it's the back of his coat, it's sampling all this stuff on the front and vice versa. So this is a pretty chaotic model, although, uh, sorry, chaotic texture, although it looks almost right. Um, so that's a sign that we're on the right track here. <clears throat> So that's how this is working. It's shooting a laser beam from my uh, new model to my old model. Um, I can affect, though, the way that works with these options down here under Selected to Active. Um, I found that for this model, if I increase my extrusion a little bit, say by 0 0.1 here, that helps it a lot. So um, this basically, yeah, as this little tooltip says, um, it will inflate the active object, so it's going to inflate my lower poly model just a little tiny bit just for baking. So then it's, it'll treat it as though the lower poly model is just outside of the higher poly model. And this is going to help fill a lot of these holes. So I'll try this uh, once more. I'll click bake 
and I think we'll have a much better result. I will pause this. Okay, just finished. And I can already see this looks way better. You can see no weird little chunks out of my shield here. Um, I'll deselect these. I'll hide my high poly one. And you can see it's projected that texture on there pretty well. There's a couple of little glitches here still. I could come through and, and fiddle with these more. Um, but I think you can see how you can get this working. And, and something like this, for instance, this little glitch on the side of the cape here, um, I think I would actually just come in and fix that with some texture painting. Uh, maybe use a clone stamp tool to get some of that blue texture on there from elsewhere um, rather than keep fiddling with this. Uh, but that is, uh, yeah, a good way to go for projecting your textures from a high poly model onto a low poly one. And I'll just uh, go in here into, this is my uh, material settings for this object. I can bring down the specular on this material so it's less shiny. So you can see we did get a pretty good capture in here. It got a lot of the details um, and those textures have been reprojected pretty well. So that's it for this video.